Okay, lesson nine. We're going to talk about fractions. Everyone's favorite topic. It's so funny too, right? Fractions are so funny. <laughs> Dylan can't stop laughing. It's so funny. Dylan's going to get like detention one day. He's going to walk in there laughing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get more detention. Yeah. So um, now if you just looked at this mathematically, um, the temptation is to probably say this is two six. Like, see how that's like so like fourth grade, Mr. Flack. Come on, we're we're mature now. We know how to add these fractions. Are you sure? About that? Are you sure? No, I'm not. Some of you aren't quite as mature as I hoped. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, no. So, what's the what's the one rule of adding fractions? What do you have to have? Yes. Pi. You have to have pi to demonstrate adding the fractions. That's right. Here's some pi. So if I had one half of the pi, don't judge me. It's Thanksgiving, all right? Let me just eat half of the pi. And then you added a fourth of the pi. Then how much of the pi do you have? One fourth. So you have one fourth left. That's right. Oh, no. I ate. Right, how much have you eaten? And you, yeah, if you ate three-fourths of the pie, you have an eating disorder, but that's okay. There's people that you can talk to, and it's going to be a great. Unless it's one of those little mini pies, then you can have, like, a, you can have a whole pie and not feel guilty at all. But I do eat a lot of pie. You can have multiple pies those tiny Yes, you can have, have multiple. Oh, they're so cute yeah. little. That means I can have 17. <laughs> Um, so, do you guys know about my Thanksgiving challenge? Yeah. It's like extra credit. Do you know about it? It's about pie. It is about, well, it's just about food in general. So, you know, like, uh, you can calculate your percent increase in weight. Uh, have you ever, anyone ever watched Biggest Loser? It's a, it's a very inspiring show, and it's really, it's like people who lose, uh, you know, it's not about how much weight you lose. It's about how, what percentage of your weight. So if like a 500 pound dude loses 100 pounds, that's awesome. But if a 300 pound dude loses 100 pounds, that's like almost half of his weight. But 100 pounds from a 500 pound dude isn't quite half, you know, you know what I mean? So it's about, all about percentage. So my Thanksgiving challenge is um, we, do, we weigh ourselves before we eat Thanks. We call it flaxgiving. We weigh ourselves before we eat Thanksgiving, and then we weigh ourselves after, and then we find our percent increase in weight. So, for example, if I'm 200 pounds and I eat 10 pounds of food, then that's five percent of my body weight that I gained. Okay. Well, you got to step it up. Yeah. All right. I don't even eat pie on Thanksgiving. I only eat mashed potatoes. You're messed up. Oh my goodness. I eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, I don't even eat turkey for Thanksgiving. You I eat duck. So, if you want to do that challenge, it's not about how much weight you gain, although there is a, a hidden, like, you're cool if you get 5%, like, eat. I mean, that's a lot. But the problem is, our little niece is like seven years old. When she has a little mashed potatoes, she gains like a bunch of weight because she has so much, she doesn't have weight in the first place. So when she eats a little, so she sometimes will win, but I usually win. I'm the best, biggest eater in my family. So technically, if, you, like, if you're 99 pounds exactly and you need one pound of nachos, you're 1% nacho. <laughs> well, Why? technically, if you're 100 pounds, exactly, because 1%. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, then you are 1% yeah. nacho. That's good. That's good, That's my good math. Like 10 pounds of potatoes, that's uh, like one tenth potato. Potatoes are really key. Now, here's the deal. If you drink, like, the sparkling apple cider, don't do that. That is the enemy of weight gain because that makes you not hungry. 
because for some reason, so I always drink water, because drink a bunch of water, it's a lot of good water weight, you get a lot of points that way, okay? And then you just pile it up, and then you drink lots of coffee and dessert, and so after dessert is done, we weigh ourselves again, we have a little chart every year, and a little whiteboard, and I win every year. Except when Caitlin won, my little niece, cheater. Yes. You win everything. Um, so didn't we do um last year? Didn't we do the challenge where, where the students had to name? A yep. They just pie. pie. So we'll do that on pie, pie day. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We'll do that again on pie day. Okay. Back to fractions. All right. So uh, that's seventy-five percent of that pie. That's a lot of pie. But, um, so basically what we need is, if this was broken up into all these little pieces, then, oh, okay, so one half is actually two fourths, okay? So every time you cut it and cut that piece in half, you're basically doubling the number of pieces. So basically this one half, if I cut it in half, then that means I have one more piece out of a total of four, so we have two fourths. So now I can add two fourths plus one fourth is three fourths. So if you have the same denominator, it's kind of like having the same label, right? If I say 12, what's 12 inches plus one foot? Two, two, feet. two feet. So what you did in your mind is you say, oh, well, 12 inches is one foot. So you changed it to foot, you converted it, and then you're able to add it, okay? You could just say one foot, 12 inches. It kind of sounds silly, but it, that could be one foot, 12 inches. Just like right now, it is 1265 PM. What? Isn't it? It's just, it's therapeutic when I, when I do that. Everyone see why it's 1265 PM? Yeah, I understand. 12 just... with 65 minutes after the 12th hour. Um, now, it's, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. If there's an easier way to say it. Just like there's an easier way to uh, say one foot, 12 inches. All right, so let's see if we can, well, basically, how did I get that four? I just multiplied that bottom number by two to get four, okay? And the golden rule of fractions, whatever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. And it's still the same amount. So this amount of pi is still half the pi even though it's cut into more pieces, okay? So here's, um, and hopefully my wife doesn't watch this video, but here's what we do. When we go to a new pizza place that we've never been to before, um, and we look at the menu and we're trying to decide if we should get a large or an extra large for the whole family, right? And so my wife says, well, how many pieces are in an extra large? That's the wrong question because the pieces could be really small, right? So it could be, it could be like, well, if I said, well, there's only four pieces in the extra large pizza. Well, that means that like, it's like going to Anthony's pizza, right? Where the pieces are huge, the slices are huge. So that doesn't tell us how much pizza it is, right? But I could do the same pizza with 16 pieces. Okay. And then my wife's like, Ooh, that's a lot of pizza. No, she doesn't really think that way. I'm making her sound not very smart. I love you. If you're watching this, I love you. I'm talking to my wife, not people at home. Now it's awkward. Just fast forward. Here we go. Okay, but this is still the same size. So what she should be saying is, what's the circumference of the pizza? I mean, or what's the area? of the pizza, of the extra large. The waiter probably so, walk away. The waiter I'm gonna go get somebody who graduated from high school, okay, so. so. <laughs> anyway, uh, don't go to that pizza place. So it's not about um, how many pieces there are, it's about the amount, right? So when you make an equivalent fraction, these guys are equivalent fractions. One half is the same as two fourths, okay? You're not making it bigger or smaller, you're just making more pieces, okay? Now, it's a scientific fact that the bigger the piece of pizza is, the better tasting it is. It tastes better when it's bigger. I don't know why, but it it's, tastes better. Okay, if you eat a little slice of pizza, you just, you just don't feel good. It's, it's not right. Okay? 
So let's go back to this. Um, so basically it's kind of like the label. What's, what's three apples plus two apples? Five apples. Okay, what's three apples plus two oranges? Three apples and two oranges. That's it. That's all you can do. You can't add them because they don't have the same label. So think of a fraction, the bottom number, the denominator is the label, and you can only add them when you have the same label, okay? All right, so here's a, a Steve Demi quote. Did we talk about Steve? He's the Matthew C. dude. Oh, you talk about him, but no one knows who he is. My hero. To compare or combine, you must be the same kind. Sounds very, um, yeah, sounds very like, like, uh, what's the word? Um, I can't think of the word. Anyway, that seems pretty exclusive. Like, you can only compare two numbers if they're the same kind of numbers. So, for example, like, uh, one third is less than two thirds. Well, because one of something is less than two of those same things, right? Um, now you can add them. One of those plus two more of those would be three of those. Okay, or one, the whole thing, three out of three is 100% one whole, right? So that's one. Um, so to compare or combine, com, com, I said compare or combine instead of compare or combine. See what I did there? I suffer from a mild case of exlestia, okay? Dyslexia. 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 Yeah. See what I did there? It's like severe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes when I get nervous, I, I, I word switches. Okay, uh, so to compare or combine, you must be the same kind. Um, if you say it really fast, no one notices anyway, okay? <laughs> So for example, if you have the same denominator, you can tell which one's bigger, or you can add or subtract them. So combine is a fancy word for add or subtract. So you not only need common denominators to add fractions, you need them to subtract as well. So let's try this. What's 33 and a third plus 33 and a third? What does that equal? Do you know, Grady? 66 and two-thirds. 66 and two-thirds. If you added these le right to left like you normally do, in addition, you start at the right and you do place value. So one-third plus one-third is two-thirds. Three plus three is six. Three plus three is six. So 66 and two-thirds. Um, what does 33 and a third represent? Like if, I, if this was percents, how much is that of a circle? Do you know, Grace? One third. One third, exactly. So 33 and a third percent. If you divided 100 by three, you would get 33 and one third. Exactly. Okay. So, um, so if I did this, what is one half of one half? So here's one half. What's one half of one half? Grady? One fourth. One fourth. So if you cut it in half and you look at that little piece right there in relationship to the whole pizza or pie, that's one out of four total pieces like that. Okay? One half of one half. We're just cutting it in half. Or cutting it in half is really just multiplying um, that denominator times two. Okay? So what's one half of one third. Anyone know what one half of one third is? Do you know? One six. One six. How'd you get that? Uh, because you um, I don't know. I just did because of math. Because <laughs> <It's> math. <laughs> yeah. So if you cut a third in half, you're cutting it into two sixths, right? So see how one of those is gonna be a sixth of the pie. Okay, what you're really doing is when you're taking half of something is you're just doubling the denominator. That sounds weird because cutting in, in half doesn't seem like you should be multiplying by anything, right? 
But if you double the denominator, that makes it smaller. So if you double three, you get six, that's half. When you double two, you get four. So that's one fourth. Okay? Um, so of in math, do you know what of means in math? Usually, most of the time, Grace? Um, it means um, the like, like um, no. I knew it. It's not what you normally initially think. It's kind of the opposite. When you say of, it kind of sounds like a division thing, but it's not. What's it's of? Like mean? Something of something like it's so what math are you doing when you take one half of one third what math is that replace that with an operation what is it a multiplication. it is that's right so of usually means multiply in math okay so think about it if I have um, if I'm 200 pounds What's three of me weigh? 600. Three of me, three of 200, three times 200 is 600, okay? Um, yeah, so all it is, that word of, you can just replace it with a multiplication sign most of the time, all right? So um, let's, do, let's do some more. So multiply, you just go straight across. One times one over two times three. So that's just one six. So you do not need a common denominator. You don't need any of that stuff. Multiplying fractions is so much easier than adding and subtracting. Adding and subtracting is quite annoying when you're adding and subtracting fractions because you have to find a common denominator. You don't have to do that when you multiply. Okay? So uh, let's try something a little crazy. What's one half times three fourths times one fifth? What do you get? Are you doing it in your head? You got it, Kira? Um, five to 40? You got 40, that's right. So two times four times five is 40 on the bottom. All you're doing is multiplying all the numbers on the bottom Multiply the numbers on the top. What'd you get for the top? Uh, three. Just three. One times three times three. So here's what happens in our brains. Um, we, we, it's hard to keep it straight. Sometimes we follow the addition rules. Sometimes we follow the multiplication rules. When we see fractions, um, we, okay, we add the tops and don't do anything at the bottom. No, that's for addition. So sometimes you can mix those rules up. So remember, you're just multiplying the top all the way across, multiplying the bottom all the way across. Got that zero. Did you guys notice that? That could have been a free problem set. I, I thought you were just doing that to make it smaller. I'm like, oh, I wonder why he's doing that. Yeah, I know. I, I thought you were going to get to that. I saw that. Sorry. Good. Well, be quick. Be quicker. Mr. Fly. I could tell if you were going to like, do something like if you end up with like a number with like a zero yeah. on the bottom, you can do something with it. Yeah. Nope. Well, it's good. Good that you think the best of me. Evie, you have your, what's up? Um, this probably doesn't count, but your six was like zero. Oh, That's because I, I was running That's out of okay. ink or something? <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Yes. Did anyone on the test get a free problem set? Um, yeah, so far, I think I graded a one or two. Um, so there's night, if you get a 90 or above, you get a free problem set. Wait, how many do you have to, if you miss, like, how many do you have to miss to get below an idea? So each question uh, is like, since there's 20 questions, so if you think about 100%, so each question is like five points, right? Gotcha. So you have to miss sometimes in later tests, you're going to have like A's and B's and stuff. So sometimes it goes up to 24, 25 questions. Gotcha. So each question at that point would be worth four Wait, points. Does it count? Take it over to 90 with the practice test, extra five? Yep. So, so after five, your practice, you have to your practice test, test. Yep. So if you get an 85 and you get and you did your practice test on before last Thursday or on last Thursday, then you get another free problem set. Is there anything I'm still going to get What if you get 105? My respect. Then I give you my respect. What if you get 105? 
Well, technically you're going to put a positive anyway. Uh, first of all, 105 is not a number. Okay, 105. No, 105. 105. Then you get my respect. Good job. All right, so yeah, you're just multiplying across. Now, what about division? How do you divide two fractions? So. Uh, wait, I know this. Yeah, I do. You know, I know, you know, Grady, how do you divide? You the second fraction yeah, the so there's a little saying. If you're dividing a fraction divided by a fraction, you copy, dot, because dot means multiplication, and flop, okay? It's not copy, dot, flip. Why isn't it copy, dot, flip? What happens when I, if I did a flip right here? I can't do that. <laughs> if I did a flip... I would look like this, right? That's not how I want my fraction to look. I want my fraction to land on his face. So if I try to flip and I messed it up and flopped, that's what you want your fraction to look like. You want to turn it over on his face, okay? Yeah, so copy dot flop. Don't copy dot flip anything because then you didn't change anything. Copy dot flop. All right, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Reciprocal is the fancy word for flipping a fraction. Flipping fraction. Reciprocal of three fourths is what? Grace? Four thirds. Four thirds. Okay. What about the reciprocal of one half is what? Marion? One fourth. Wait, one half. So flip that. You could say two over one, or since it's over one, you could just say two, right? Two. Good. So what's the reciprocal of um, 17? Grady? 17. What? 17. 17? Just 17? No? What's the reciprocal of 17? Marin? One seventeenth. Sorry, I'm not ignoring you. My glasses are, they're not bifocals, but they're like the, what do you call them? They kind of go slowly. So my peripheral is not great. What is it called? Like the blends eventually to the bifocal? Does anyone wear glasses? I didn't know this. You guys don't wear glasses. I like glasses. I wear glasses. I wear glasses. I wear glasses. Okay, so yeah, because technically 17... Any number can be written as a fraction. How do you write any number as a fraction? How do you write elephant as a fraction? Yes, Avery. Elephant over one. Elephant over one. So 17 is technically 17 over one. So when you flip that sucker, you get one over 17. Okay? Make sense? All right, that's the reciprocal. So that's what we need when we, mul when we divide fractions. We're gonna copy dot flop or cop multiply by its reciprocal. All right. Um, so I think that's that's it for lesson nine. Um, uh, well, let's just do one example of a division problem, shall we? So three fifths divided by um, one fourth. How do you divide three fifths by one fourth? Do it in your head right now, and then raise your hand and tell me what to do. So you might not have an answer yet, but give me the next step, you know? I'm thinking. She's thinking. She thinks like What was this. the question again? I just completely lost it. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Wait. Okay, what do you, have you to do first? It? Yep, I want to oh, okay. divide this fraction. Change it to de uh, decimal and then. Oh, you could do that. Yeah, you could change it. You could, this is 0. 0.6 divided by 0. 0.25. You could do that. But sometimes if it's like a third, then that's hard because that's a repeating decimal and that doesn't work. But that works nicely with some fractions, but not all fractions. All right. How do I divide these fractions? Grace. Oh, if you over flip five, um, make it five thirds. Okay, now you're flipping the wrong, now you're out of control flipping. No, you can flip three-fifths to make it three-fifths. No, but what are you gonna flop? flop. Which flop. which fraction are you gonna flop? You flop one-fourth. Yeah, so remember it's copy. Copy, dot, flop. 
Three fifths. Or you can flip dot flop if you want, because flipping will land on your feet. So flip three fifths. He's having a fun time. He just lands on his feet again. Dot. So make that division and multiplication problem and flop that to four over one or just four, but keep it four over one because when you multiply a fraction times a whole number, sometimes that's confusing because you don't multiply both things by four, just the top. What's three times four? Twelve. Twelve. What's five times one? Another five. Five. So there it is. Is that what you got? Twelve fifths? Yeah, but then I reduced. Uh, so it's already reduced, but what you did is you changed it to a uh, mixed number. Yeah. So what is it as a mixed number? Uh, two and two fifths. Good job. Two and two fifths. So this is an okay answer. Um, unless you're at Subway and you say, yes, I would like 12 fifths turkey sandwiches, please. And, and they're going to look at you really blankly. But they're also going so to look at the exact same way if you go, I'd like two and two fifths of a But they can at least try to figure that one out, right? <laughs> but 12 fifths, please. I'd like 12 fifths turkey sandwiches. Then they're going to look at you and say, you know what? We don't do math here. We work at Subway. So please go to like Quiznos or something. Um, I'm sorry if you work at Subway. What's Quiznos? <laughs> yes it's like it used to be subway's like major rival but not anymore because subway took over the world i don't really like subway it's too healthy i don't like you're pro and that's why you're probably he healthier than most people so. I've been to all of them this week. Hey, that's lesson nine. Black math. Give me some math and I'll give you some flat.